Hey YouTube, Adopted Mike here, and in this video I'm going to be unboxing and taking a look at this EBGA Z68 for the win motherboard. So you can see down here, Intel Z68 chipset, so we got 1155 socket processor support. Alright, 7 and i5, SLI ready, and if I can get the top, there we go, USB 3 and SATA 3, 6 gigabit a second connection. On the side here, we can take a look. We've got onboard CPU temperature monitor, EVGA Elite, passive chipset chipset heatsink, 100% solid capacitors. We got an easy voltage reading points, 12 phase PWM, so that's awesome. We've got uh, triple BIOS support, so that's kind of crazy, it's with uh, three separate profiles. So you have a backup compare BIOS versions. Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay. More gold content. PCI Express disabled jumpers, so that's really cool as well. And we have uh, integrated flash storage. Hmm. That'll be interesting to see that one. It will. Okay, I'll go on the top there. And we have the side here. Nothing major on the side. And here we go. This package contains the EVGA Z68 motherboard. Installation disk, rear I.O. case panel. So there's all of everything that's installed in here. So this is quite a big box and it's fairly heavy for a motherboard box. So anyway. There we go. So now we have the main box. I'll just get a little better angle at it. Now, open it up. Okay, so for starters, we have the manual with a driver disc and a nice case badge. Always double check the internet for better drivers because no doubt uh, this is an older board, so there will be driver updates. Okay, then we have a poster folds out showing the motherboard itself and all the components, but we'll go over that on the actual motherboard. On this side here, we have a very, very tiny, this must be like a 10 or 20, it's probably like a 20 millimeter fan. This, I'm assuming this would go on a chipset, so if you wanted to have it or not. Uh, for silence freaks, you probably wouldn't use this, or you'd use a water block. And then for normal use, you probably would put this on. Um, these are the screws to put this on. We've got a rear I.O. shield, and it's black, and it's padded. So I absolutely love that. This is uh, what I would call a premium rear I.O. shield. We've got a three-way SLI bridge there. Very nice. And then we have a three-way SLI bridge with wider spacing on the uh, card here. We've got, and we, well, let's open this up, it's hard to tell. Oh, so we've got a Molex to three SATA drive power connector. Then we have two SATA, three, four, six gigabit a second connections. We have a two-way SLI bridge that is flexible. Okay, yep, there it is. And then on the left side, we've got, in here we have, Okay, here we go. Let's, let's open this one up as well, too. Take out the goodies in there. We have a Molex to dual um, SATA power. We have some more um, SATA data connectors. Then we have a rear I.O. shield. I can open up here. So there's the rear I.O. shield, so it's got two USB 2.0s and a fire wire, and then this will just go plug into the motherboard. 
And then we have yet another rear I.O. connector for USB 3.0. So this will convert the fr uh, front panel adapter on the motherboard to two USB 3.0s and then it can be placed in the rear panel. Okay, so that does it for the accessories. Now, let's take that off and get the motherboard out of here. And then we'll get it out of its plastic bag. So here's the board out of the bag. So far we'll start off here, um, just peel this off, please read before CPU installation, oh I see, okay cool, so it kind of walks you through the CPU installation, alright, and then we have this covering the RAM slots, this sticker here. And this is telling you, you know, to use slots 1 and 3 first, and then 1.65 volts or less. Well, yeah, for long-term stability anyways. So I suppose, you know, you can still go higher, but they're just recommending that 1.65 um, 1 volts. Wow, this motherboard has got a lot going on. So, we'll start off uh, down here with, um, and just kind of walk around. Okay, so starting up at the bottom, we have a built-in PC speaker. Then we have a BIOS, or BIOS, excuse me, select. So there's three selections here to select different BIOSes. So that's great if you screw one up. Got a reset and a power button built in a CMOS reset. We have a 4-pin system fan, so that's pretty cool. There's our 1394 Firewire header. There's two USB 2.0 headers underneath these caps. We have another 4-pin fan uh, that's a system fan too. We've got the USB 3.0 header down there, so that's pretty cool. And I'm guessing there must be two of three, so there must be three of them on here, or um, anyway, we'll just keep going. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, two of three. So, um, yeah. Oh, I bet because of the rear panel. Okay, now coming around here, we have the front panel audio connectors. And then this little connector here next to it, or rather big connector, is used for connecting up a front panel controller like this. This is their, um, so off, right on the case, you can disable uh, some of the PCI Expresses. You can add more volts to the V-Core and such. And there's a postcode CPU temperature built right in here as well, too, so that's kind of cool. And I'm going to guess that maybe this will glow red as well, too. I didn't see an LED behind here, but it's hard to say. So anyway, that's a whole different story, but this will connect up with that via the included cable that came with the uh, front panel deal. So then moving along we have uh, three SATA 2 3 gigabit a second and two SATA 3 6 gigabit a second ports and we've got our jumpers for disabling the PCI Express slots and we have another four pin uh, power for, or excuse me, 4-pin fan header. Then we've got our 24-pin, which is kind of cool that it's at a right angle. I think that's kind of neat. And then underneath here is where we were talking about earlier when I wondered what it meant with the flash. Well, basically, you can take a compact flash card and install it, if, you, if I put it the right way, install it into, well, you know, if I get it the right way, it'll look a lot better. There we go. It'll pop into there. So now you can have some compact flash storage, you know, depending on what size. This is a little 4 gigabyte one. But if you get a fast enough one, you may see some kind of benefits. You can use that for some, maybe some hard drive caching or something. I'm not really sure. I'm going to imagine there's some something built in software-wise or BIOS-wise to uh, control how that works. Or maybe it just shows up as another drive in Windows. Down here, we have another 4-pin system fan header there. 
Then we've got our dims. We've got a CPU fan header here that is four pin. You have this gigantic heat sink over the power delivery here and here. And we've got two eight pin powers for the CPU so you can really juice up the CPU with that. Then there's another four pin uh, power chassis or excuse me chassis uh, fan header there and then kind of moving along we've got our socket up there and we have another big heat sink down here and then this passive one over here on the Z6, uh, Z68 chipset Okay, and we've got a PCI Express by one here, but I'm not sure that one ain't gonna do a whole hell of a lot with this in the way, so it'd have to be a little tiny, like a little wireless card or something that went there. And then uh, we've got a four pin fan header there again. Let's see, we also have, moving along here, we've got uh, this Molex connector to give more power to the PCI Express uh, slots. Keep moving down. We've got a SPDIF there on the right and front panel HD audio on the left there. And we're back down to where we started. So now I'm going to start going over um, some of the features of this board. And although, you know, I'm kind of wondering where that um, little fan would mount. Hmm. Well, you know, we might have to take out the big-ass poster that came with this board to get a little bit more information. And, uh, yeah, so I will do that now. Okay, so i got some more information anyway. First of all, that little fan actually will attach to the rear I.O. shield here, and it will exhaust air out. So I don't really think... I mean, in my opinion, that's kind of gimmicky, but, um, sure. That, I mean, whatever. It would, uh, blow a little bit of air out, so whether that makes a difference or not, I'm not really sure. I mean, you're literally looking at having it, um, right about there, so that fan is right there, just going to push air out. But, anyway, that's what that little fan was for. I just thought it might attach to a to the chipset here. I've seen that on other EVGA motherboards. I, In fact, I have one that uh, there's a fan that attaches there um, on the north bridge. But anyway, so that's the one thing. Now, as far as these go, we have, uh, they're all 16 slots. We've got the one that's a one. So this is a 16 if it's by itself. And then this next one here is only a one. So even though it's a 16, this is a one. So you've got 16, and then 8, 8, 8, and 8. Um, so basically what would happen if you populate this and this, you're going to have 8 and 8. So this is only 16 when it's by itself. So you'd go 8, 8, 8, 8, and 8. If that makes sense, hopefully. Yeah. But if it's, this is on by itself, then this is going to be a straight 16. So basically if you had, you know, graphics cards, you'd have one here, one here, and one here, so you'd have three-way SLI is what you end up with. Um, and then you'd have eight, eight, and eight at PCI Express 2.0, which is still plenty fast. Or you could do um, an eight and an eight here, and then this one could be a PhysX processor. Um, or you could do, you know, a double one here and four single slot ones, you know, just depending on how you want to set up. There's quite a bit of uh, options here to set up. Just make sure if you're doing multi-graphics, plug power into that and it will save your 24 pin from uh, getting possibly getting burnt out. Okay, so now we'll move on to the rear I.O. Okay, so the little fan would go here. We've got a reset CMOS button. USB 2.0, there's 2, 4, 6 uh, here. There's two eSATAs here. You've got your Firewire. You've got dual gigabit Ethernet, which is pretty cool. And two USB 3.0s. And then your six channel audio out. So, yeah, this is a very feature rich board. Very aggressive looking. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to go over as well, too. Um, 
EVGA is claiming that this handles 16 gigabytes. They have not tested it, uh, according to the manual, with 8 gig uh, DIMMs, so you couldn't go 32. They've only said that it works with 4s. So you could go maximum of 16 gigs in this particular board, or, you know, 4, 8, 12, 16 is how you do it. But it's ideal you'd use two slots to get the, uh, at least two slots to get the dual channel memory. But um, anyway, that wraps up this unboxing of the EVGA Z68 for the Win motherboard, socket 1155. And yeah, that wraps it all up. So as always, thank you guys for watching.